Greetings, my young math Padawans. This is lesson 5-1, nth roots and rational exponents. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at something called the nth root. What that simply means is this little number up here called the index number, n is what is called the index number, is going to be another other than 2, right? See, here's the deal. We've been taking square roots and using square roots for a while, so like the square root of 49. But what we never told you was right there in that little spot where there is no number, there is an unwritten 2 that's there. And the square root of 2 simply means what number times itself 2 times gives me 49. And, of course, the square root of 49 is, in fact, 7. Well, why has that happened? Well, because when we're taking the square root, what we're looking for is we're looking for, again, what number squared will give me 7. And, or, I'm sorry, what number squared will give me 49? And, of course, 7 squared gives me 49. So this index number and this exponent kind of cancel each other out and we're left with just a seven. That's going to be important for a little bit later on. But of course, we're going to go look at other values. So for example here, we have the third root of 27. So again, we're thinking what number times itself three times will give me 27? Well, well I got to think about that a little bit. But here's what I do know. I know 3 to the third power equals 27. So the third root of 3, I'm sorry, the third root of 3 to the third power is just, in fact, 3. So the third root of 27 equals 3 because 3 to the third power equals 27. Going on to B, what about the third root of negative 64? Ooh, a negative. We're not used to seeing a negative underneath a radical, but check it out with this particular problem. What number to the third power will give me negative 64? Well, here's what I know. I know 4 times itself 3 times will give me 64. But negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, or negative 4 to the third power will also, or will give me 64, not also 64. It's the only thing that will give me negative 64. So, therefore, the third root of negative 64 equals negative 4, because negative 4 to the third power gives me negative 64. What about C here? The fourth root of negative 81. Uh-oh. Well, let's see here. I know um, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's really like 9 times 9, so that gives me 81. So maybe the answer is negative 3, but check it out. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 gives me positive 81. I don't know of any way to get negative 1 for, or negative 81 for this answer. So this is, act, in fact, no solution. That's what this means, a little zero with a line through it, no solution. Because we can't take the fourth root of negative 81 um, because it doesn't work out nicely. This is like imaginary numbers with square roots. However, with fourth roots, we don't have to worry about imaginary numbers. That's the really good news. So we have the nth root of different um, numerical values. But sometimes the nth root is not the most efficient way to write exponents. So sometimes there's other ways that we can write it and ways that are a little bit more convenient. So instead of using this index number, Sometimes we take our radicals and we rewrite them using rational exponents. So again, rational numbers, numbers written as fractions. So rational exponents would be things like this, like 9 to the 3 halves power, 4 to the negative 1 half power, 81 to the 3 fourths power, 1 to the 7 eighths power. So rational exponents are exponents that are fractions. Or sometimes we can write it as one. So there's a general rule here that I'd like to bring to your attention. That rule is when I see a rational exponent, again, sometimes it's nice to look at them, but it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what it means when it says 9 to the 3 halves power. Like, what the heck does that really mean? What does 9 to the 3 halves really mean? So what I do is I take and I can rewrite it using this rule. A to the m over n power. A to the m over n power. You will see that n becomes the index number. And this top number, m, becomes the number that I'm raising the value to underneath of that radical. 
Sometimes order can be out of order here, like we can raise that, we can take the nth root of a and then raise it to the mth power, or we can take a to the mth power and then take the nth root of that. It's really up to you, and it's about convenience here in this particular case. So back to that nine to the three halves power, what does that really mean? Well, that really means we're gonna take nine, and we can rewrite that nine to the three halves power. We can really take that, we can, that means that we can take that two, that would be two, and it would be two in the index number, and it would be nine to the third power underneath the radical. See, this is what I was talking about, about convenience, the way you wanna write it. Nine to the third power, man, I need a calculator for that one. I don't even feel like doing it. I couldn't do that in my head to know that nine to the third power is 729. I don't know how anyone could actually figure that out. And then on top of it, you're gonna have to turn around, you're gonna have to take the square root of 729. And I, I don't wanna do that, no thank you, no thank you. So instead, what I can do is I can view that as the square root of nine to the third power. That's a little bit more convenient to do because the square root of nine, now that's a number I can actually do in my head. That's three. So that simplifies down to three to the third power, which is in fact 27. Okay, what about some of those other ones? Like four to the negative one half power. Oh, did you see that second rule? Well, just remember that negatives, when you raise any exponent to the negative power, that means put it on the denominator. So for part B here, what this really means is do one over four to the one half power. Just like that, we can rewrite it, putting that negative exponent on the denominator of the fraction. And remember, four to the one half power is just like taking the square root of four. And the square root of four is in fact two. So four to the negative one half power is the same thing as one half. And last, 81 to the three fourths power. Again, this would be the fourth root of 81. And then we're gonna take that result and raise it to the third power. Again, I just think it's easier to do that because I can't do it the other way, right? What's the other way? The fourth root that we're of 81 to the third power. I'd have to do that 81 to the third power. And that's something I absolutely cannot do in my head. I mean, only true math geniuses will know that 81 to the third power is 531,441, and I'm not that smart. I can't do that. And then just to turn around and have to take the fourth root of that number? No, thank you. It's hard enough to do the fourth root of 81, but I do know my fourth roots, and I know that the fourth root of 81 is in fact three. So this really becomes three to the third power, which is in fact 27. What about one to the seven eighths power? Well, that's pretty easy. That's just the eighth root of one to the seventh power. Now, now here's, the, here's a case where I'm gonna do that one to the seventh power first, right? I'm gonna write it like that instead because I know one to the seventh power is in fact one and then the eighth root of one is in fact one. So that guy just becomes a little bit easier. Ooh, what about B? That wasn't on my original list. Ooh, six to the two fifths power. What does that mean? Well, folks, that means take the fifth root of six to the second power, or, or the fifth root of 36. And I can't do that in my head. I cannot, there's no way that I can do that in my head because it's gonna be some crazy decimal answer. So I'm gonna really rely on the calculator. Now, here's the thing. You can actually, if you do it correctly, type that all in one line in your calculator and you're gonna to wanna to use the little caret and you're gonna to need to make sure you got the two fifths in the parentheses. And when you do that, you get some crazy decimal, 2.04767, and it keeps going. So that would be a decimal approximation of six to the two fifths power. We can use nth roots and rational exponents to solve equations, but, but we can only use it to find real roots. So none of the imaginary solutions are gonna come up here. So that's, that's kind of, I guess, good news, bad news. I don't know which you wanna view that as, but we definitely want to try to use some of these rational exponents, especially when we just wanna find the real roots. And for this chapter, that's gonna be just good enough. We don't have to worry too much about imaginary roots at this point. So let's do three examples, then I'm gonna give you a couple to do on your own. So the first one, five, x to the third equals 320. Please remember folks, this is five times x to the third power equals 320. So before we can undo the exponent, the first thing we have to do is to divide both sides by five. That makes these fives go away. I'm left with x to the third equals 320 divided by five, 
which is 64. Get your calculator and do that math. And now I'm going to raise both sides to the one-third power. Wait a minute. What do you really mean here, Mr. Haub? Wait, 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 wait. It's a third root. Don't you mean, I'm sorry, it's a third power. Don't you mean take the third root of both sides? Well, folks, these two things are exactly the same thing. You can either think about it as raising it to the one-third power, or you can think about it as taking the third root of both sides. It doesn't matter. It's going to get you the same answer, because regardless, this three and this one-third will cancel out. The same as the three in the index number and the three in the exponent will cancel it's, it's, uh, each other out. And you're left with just x on the left-hand side. And then we can do the third root of 64, which I think we've seen that a number of times now. We come up with the answer of x equals 4. What about b? x plus 5 to the fourth power equals 16. What am I going to do? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take the fourth root of both sides. Thank goodness, the fourth root of 16, that's easy math. That I can do. That's a 2. The fourth root and the fourth power cancel out. Do you see how I undid the exponent first? Because that will allow me to get what's inside the parentheses. That will allow me to get to the x plus 5. I'm not going to multiply out the x plus 5 to the fourth power. I'm not going to do that in this particular problem. Uh-oh, folks, but here's the thing. Remember what I told you about even and odd numbers? Oh, we have an even index number here, right? The fourth root. So I took the fourth root of both sides. And just like when I took the square root of both sides, I needed a plus or minus. Anytime I take an even root of both sides, I need a plus or minus. Let me back out here a second. Over here in part A, I took the third root of both sides. That is fine. I don't need a plus or minus there. But here, I took the fourth root of both sides. So when I do that, I need to make sure I do, in fact, have a plus or minus, which means my problem now gets split into two. X plus 5 equals positive 2. X plus 5 equals negative 2. And I'm going to solve these problems independently of each other. So I get x equals negative 3, and I get x equals negative 7 as my two possible values for this equation. Okay, last but not least, letter C. 1 half x to the fifth equals 512. Well, I've got to get rid of the 1 half first, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 512. That gives me 1,024 which I'm going to turn around and take the fifth root of both sides. Fifth root does not require a plus or minus. It's an odd number. So I'll take the fifth root of 1,024, and I'm not smart enough to do that one in my head. I'm going to need a calculator for that, and I come up with the answer of 4 when I do that because 4 to the fourth power, or sorry, 4 to the fifth power is 1,024. All right, folks, we're to the point where you can pause the video and try out these three problems. I will remind you, don't forget the plus or minus when it's necessary. So go ahead, pause the video now, try these three problems. All right, let's go with the first one. 8x to the third power. What am I going to do first? First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that 8. So I'll divide both sides by 8, and I'll get x to the third power equals, let's see, 64 divided by 8 is 8. I will, in fact, take the third root of both sides. Third root is odd. I do not require a plus or minus. The third root of 8 is 2. Let's keep going. On to B. X minus 2 to the third power equals negative 14. All right. Let's take the third root of both sides. That gets rid of the third power. So the third power and the third root gets rid of each other. So I'm left with X minus 2 on the left side. The third root of 14. Ooh, gross. The third root of 14. Well, that's okay to take the third root of a negative number, but I do get this crazy decimal, 2.41011, so on and so forth. And it is negative. There's, it's not, not a problem here because it's the third root of a negative number is just fine. But I'm going to turn around and go ahead and add 2 to both sides of this equation, and I come up with the answer of negative 0. 0 0.4101, and there's a bunch of decimals after it. Folks, don't be afraid to use your calculator. You totally can. doesn't have to work out nicely. What about C? X plus 3 to the fourth power equals 81. And, of course, I'm going to undo that fourth power by taking the fourth root of both sides. The fourth root of both sides 
does in fact require a plus or minus. So what's the fourth root of 81? Plus or minus three. And then I got this x plus three, which splits my problem to two. x plus three equals three, and x plus three equals negative three. So I'm gonna come up with the answers of negative six and zero, both of which will work. All right, folks, if you have any questions, make sure you get them answered. As always, good luck on your assignments. Thanks for watching.